Welcome back to session three of Get Into Games. Uh, by the way, we are streaming live right now from um, the Digital Native Academy in Rotorua. So I'm not sure if we <laughs> told you guys that. Yeah. No, we are based in a small studio in Rotorua right now, uh, streaming to you all on twitch.tv slash getintogamesnz. And of course, you can check us out on getintogames.nz, the website itself, which will have more information for everything that you guys have been following us for today. Of course, I'm still that guy, Xenoj, joined by... I'm still Kahu. Still Kahu. I'm still Kahu. You make that sound far more disappointing. But of course, <laughs> she Kahu. is a star and it's amazing to be here with her. But what are we doing next, Kahu? So this session is all about game design and we will hmm. introduce you guys and give you a bit more um, information on the first of the competitions. So the video game competition is open to all New Zealand school students. And hmm. to help explain a little bit more, we've brought along the game designer, Dan Millwood. Hey, Dan, are you there? Yeah, hey, how's it going? Hey, Dan, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, Can it's you... a real pleasure to be here and have the opportunity to talk about the Aotearoa Steam Game Challenge. First of all, can you just introduce yourself real quick and let us know what you do? So I'm a game designer. I've been in the games industry for about 20 years and I run a company called Gamefruit and um, we're our business is all about helping young people become game designers and preparing the next generation of game developer. Awesome. Now, while we're doing this interview, uh, Zeno is just going to be playing Genshin Impact in the back. So, <laughs> <laughs> I used the situation, Dan. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get some of my Genshin dailies uh, done during this time. But of course, we want to hear more about Game Fruit Studios and what you guys are doing out there with that incredible work. Cool. Um, well, so I started off, we, we started Game Fruit off hoping that um, other independent game developers and game developers like us would come to the party and uh, make games as well. But when we launched Game Fruit, uh, we were kind of overwhelmed by thousands of young, budding, hobbyist game developers and students from around the world and their teachers. and so we kind of had to figure out what that meant and pivot from uh, being a, you know, what, what pivot from being a company that made tools for other game developers to being a company that looked after students and their teachers. And um, um, yeah, and that's meant we've had to work really closely with lots of schools. It's meant we've had to work really closely with lots of young people. Um, and of course it's meant we've, had the 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 privilege to work really closely with the Ministry of Education and New Zealand Qualifications Authority and uh, to make learning resources that don't just teach kids how to make games but how to do it in such a way that aligns with the New Zealand curriculum. So when you work through our tutorials, um, you're learning to code in a very deliberate and specific way that checks uh, the game design boxes, which are really important for me and for Game Fruit and for other potential employers, uh, but also for for teachers. So if you're using Game Fruit in the classroom, you, you know that if you're using specific tutorials, you're satiating all of those curriculum requirements. And looking at your website, it does look very user friendly. I assume that's on purpose, and you just you really want to make it a good way for people to try. Is that right? Yeah, it's kind of all about making game development easy. And so we've been making um, like in specifically two D game development, and we've been making two D games for a very long time. So. Um, after a while, we started to notice sort of certain patterns in the games we were making, and we've built interface around making it easy to create those the parts of the video games that you shouldn't have to um, be, you know, spend too much time on. Like when you're making a game in Game for it, we've made we've created interface for drawing levels and creating additional levels like menu screens and stuff like that and um so so we're kind of our our philosophy is to take away 
um, you know, things that young people and game developers shouldn't have to code from scratch because it's it's really common to do so. It wouldn't make sense to to code certain things. So could somebody again, again and again? Could somebody who doesn't have much experience in coding could they try out your software? Yeah, hundred um, percent. So we've made Game Fruit uh, for the lowest possible common denominator, me, and so <laughs> I can use it to make games. Um, I'm, I'm like a I'm a designer, and I, I kind of think creatively, and I like making things look pretty. Um, I'm not a programmer at all, but I can use Game Fruit to construct a game and. I've learned, oh, it's taken me a lot longer than like my team of programmers, um, but I can use Game Fruit um, and some of the basic stuff in Game Fruit to make a pretty interactive game very easily. And then uh, you, there's like, uh, it uses block based programming. So any kid actually who's familiar with Scratch and any teacher who's familiar with Scratch should be able to jump into Game Fruit and learn how to make games in game fruit right? because it uses a similar coding paradigm and it's not the same and it's good that it's not the same i've heard teachers go into game fruit and go, <gasps> it's not like scratch true <laughs> um it does a million more things than scratch and um all, all the things that it does do are sort of very deliberately designed around the things that we make in real video games and so we're trying to like take take that and make that easy and make that into block-based programming. Um, that said, there's also the ability these days to um, type JavaScript code um, into Game Fruit as well. So you can, you know, you can start off real novice, no experience at all, use the visual tools to design and draw out your level and figure out what it looks like, and then you can um, add code at a pace that is sort of comfortable. So the first big challenge that we have is the video game challenge. So for those of you in the classroom who are trying to find it, um, it's on the little drop down. It's the video game challenge. Can you tell us a little bit more about this challenge, please? Like, what is it exactly? So uh, this challenge is all about young people making a game that tells a story and the stories we want to be told are stories that are based around your local histories and the um to, to, from a and from a like a curriculum perspective it's perspective it's designed to align with the the updated new zealand histories or aotearoa new zealand's histories learning area um, so we want to be seeing students with their teachers making games about where they're from um, or s other other places in Aotearoa that are special to them. Um, you can enter the game as either an individual or as a team, um, and we would expect there's, there's certain things that, your game has to have and one of those things is like a start screen uh one of those things another one of those things is an end screen uh quite often people make things in scratch and it's just the game but real games have start screens and end screens and pause screens and other things that make them real games and um but all of those things together feed into what we call a game loop um, which is a subject for another day, but it's suffice to say it's important that games have all these parts. And so, um, yeah, the competition uh, entries close the end of term three, and we'll be uh, looking at those um, over the term three school holidays and early term four. Are there any prizes? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, we, we it's, a, it's a learning that matters, sure, but prizes are good too. Yeah, the prize of making and completing a video game cannot be bad. Um, it, it, it feels really good. Um, 
to to ship something and get something out the door. But I know that's not what you mean. Um, yep, uh, we've had some really generous sponsors. Um, Code Avengers have contributed um, some Beats headphones. I know that much. Um, and um, yeah, and, and actually, I, I, I'm not sure of what the other uh, uh, prizes are. Have mostly been focused on the the competition side of it. Now I'm kind of thinking: Do our university students count? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess that's a no. Uh, We're gonna. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no comment. Yes. Uh, hey, if you, if, if you want to make a game and, re- and impress me just for the heck of it, you're welcome to. Um, um, and, you... And, you know, and, and that's like a really good pro tip for mm. anyone. And I always give this pro tip to to teachers and to young people who are looking at getting into the games industry. And it's it's exactly what I was told. Uh, if, uh, to the question, how do I get into the games industry? You have to make games. Um, a, a CV is not going to cut it. You need a portfolio. We, we want to see, and it's preferable to see people making lots of mini games as opposed to trying to make the next Grand Theft Auto, um, which, you know, a game like that took a team of over a thousand people. So we want to see young people making games that have a start screen, have a core game mechanic, uh, full of interesting story and have an ending and you know and and then i've created a complete product which is really impressive to everyone to their teachers to employers Mm. to their peers um and hopefully to themselves Mm. it's it's funny that you bring up you know that that kids should be working on these smaller type games because i believe you have a way to make a small platformer for us right now if we shoot over to questions from twitch chat is is that correct can you make us a small platformer right now? Yeah, I sure can. Okay. Um, if you guys uh, tell me when to go, are you looking at my production? My Give now? us the thumbs up. Yeah, we are, we are switched yep. over. You guys are We're watching Dan over. make a game live right now, by the way. Okay, so what, what I'm doing, what I've done actually, is I've put down uh, on, on a background layer uh, what I call a tracer map. And a tracer map is... Um, something you can use to trace over uh, to design uh, like a more complete level. And so this level is based off an early video game that I used to play as a kid called Zeliard. And it was just the level design was really cool. I have never forgotten how much fun I had sort of playing that game. So asking students to put a tracer map into their game and just uh, copy over the tracer map it's an opportunity to have an experience of mm. designing a map uh based off something that somebody's put a huge amount of thought into so um as opposed to if i just go over here quite often you'll see people just selecting a brush going that <laughs> and i'm gonna i'm gonna go ah, plop put my character in and and i've done my level right so and, it's all about um, having to be thoughtful of where you actually kind of place those platforms. Is that correct? A hundred percent. And so if I if I scroll down here, I've got all these different props that I can use to mm. to, to decorate my layer, uh, uh, my, my my level. Yeah, I'll just call that props. I can put that in. Uh, By the way, if anyone in Twitch here. has a question for Dan, uh, chuck it down. And so I put everything, when I'm making a game, I put everything in different layers. Mm. Uh, layers, you're, you're a pr- I'm pretty ubiquitous across, across lots yeah. of digital tools. <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's true for game development as mm. well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a script to uh, this player. And this is where it opens up our, yep. the, the equivalent of our... Um, uh, scratch interface, which is actually powered by a tool called Blockly, which Google made. And, wow! Um, behind the scenes here, it's all JavaScript. 
So if I go in there and I change the backspace delete to right arrow. So when the right arrow is pressed, what I want to do is I want to kick off some physics. And I want to set velocity block on X velocity to 200. So when I hit the right arrow key, mm. it's going to um, send the player off to the right. At, um, I'm going to name my script player and you can just sort of say, there you go. Wow. Very, rud very, very rudimentary, but yeah. very quickly with game dev, you can start to make this stuff feel really cool. So if I quickly change that to zero, so when I put the right arrow down, yeah. go right at 200 pixels per second. When I take my finger off, pause it, uh, go back to zero, and I'll just throw in some animation for you. And I already know a lot of the stuff stuff in advance. But it's it's so quite straightforward, kind of which is really great. Like yeah. it, it's not complicating it. It's it's kind of telling you exactly what needs to happen. And so that's really cool. If I, yeah, uh, and it's almost as fun as playing a game. Mm. Oh wow! Look um, at the animation change. That's, that's cool. incredible. Wow! And um, we do actually have a question in the chat right now, there, Dan. Uh, what would you suggest as the best beginner format to use with intermediate age students to explore game development? Um, now they are an iPad class, um, so something mm -hmm. that would be suitable to use on that. And that was from Fire Deb at Kaitao Intermediate. Shout out Kaitao. Kia ora. I think. Um, uh, you can do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now on an iPad mm. and, and game, using Game Fruit. And I still think it's a good good place to start. Cool. I would That's use, I would, yeah. I'd, I'd click on the, so what I'm doing now mm. with this character, uh, for you guys, you'd click on tutorials, you'd click on the game development resources, and you would work on, you, you'd work your way through the Platformer 101 tutorial. Mm. And um, in, in here, where I was programming the, the arrow keys, you can see here there's also a mobile category for on touch. So you'd be able to use those blocks on an iPad to create like a virtual joystick. And so that's something we could definitely help you with as well we we, we do that stuff all the time That's hopefully amazing. that answers your question i i think so i so there you guys go if you want to go and check out gamefruit.com the url is in the chat um and there are great tutorials as dan is guiding us through that at the moment he has done all of this while we have been talking and taking these questions in chat um so you guys can really see how easy it is to utilize this tool that they have come up with to kind of get those you know the, the fundamentals of basically how a game's development can work um this i really love this blockly integration there uh dan it's just like so straightforward i love how simple it looks and especially now you've just created the left um action <laughs> so quickly so now your character can move left and right is that correct yeah Yep. Oh my gosh. Um, a quick so, question for you, Dan. How do you keep yourself motivated? Oh. Oh, is that from the who, who, who's asking? <laughs> 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 that was from uh, Kurorakia School. They they would like to know. Well, I honestly, I just grew up playing games and mm. loved games. So for, for me. Designing games is just something I, I really enjoy. I find it um, to be a pleasurable experience. Mm -hmm. So to, you know, when you're, I guess when your work is something that you enjoy doing, it's less work. And um, so some motivation when it comes to this stuff has never really been a big, big mm -hmm. thing for me. A cool way to break that down um, for our Rangata you're watching right now is if you have that passion, chase that through, let that guide you, see where it takes you, and you know you could end up on this pathway uh, just like Dan has with uh, GameFruit.com. Um, again, you guys can use the URL in the chat right now. 
um, to utilize this great tool set to build your own game, understand how that all works, what the programming does and the coding, and how that all comes together to build up this game. Uh, we'll take one more question if anyone has one in the chat. Kahu, can you spot any? Uh, yes, I can. What is the first game you ever played, Dan? Ooh. That's such a good question. Um, poor. The Probably it would have been on the PC when there were no graphics and I stumbled across uh, The Hobbit. It was like a text-based wow. yeah. <laughs> adventure. Yeah. So you'd, you'd boot up the game and it would, and there was nothing there. It was like turning a game on and your game was a blank screen. Yeah. And then you had to type look and then typing in look and then hitting enter would tell you with words what you could see and then it was like there's a path to the left mm. and there's a dragon to the right what do you want to do sort of thing <laughs> oh and so you type in run left and and so i don't know early video games really got me into storytelling as well mm. and so for me games to be enjoyable and i know this isn't true for everyone but for me the most fun games are the games that are you know, rich with, with story. And to yeah. go back to our competition, I think mm. there's so much scope for, for telling amazing Aotearoa themed stories. Mm -hmm. um, and they should be told and gaming um, is a great way of doing it. Mm. Oh, thank you so much for that. I will just have Kahu and I answer that same question of first game. I'm gonna show my age again. Apple two E, Montezuma's Revenge. That's the first Ooh, game nice. I can remember. I yep. think one of my first games might be like the putt putt games with the like purple car and you like click where to go. Oh, yeah. And it's got like arrows and you got to click on things. I think that might that be the is, very, very That is first. quite old school. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I think you guys have it. Uh, Dan, thank you so much uh, for joining us. If uh, kids want to see what you are working on at the moment, uh, where can they follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter on Dan at Game. Oh, no, at Dan Millwood. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll be I'll be hanging out in the in the um, Discord room. So if cool. you want to chat, ask more questions, I'll be around. I'll make sure I'm available. There you guys have it. We are still working on that Discord chat, but you will be able to reach out to Dan uh, once we have that channel up and running for you guys later this week. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to play us through your animation one last time, the small game you had been working on while we were talking with you. Easy. Ooh. Ooh. I was just a couple of, couple of blocks from, from having a flip. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. That is incredible. Oh. And of course, remember, kids, you can check this out at make.gamefruit.com and just build up something like this, uh, like Dan did for us right now. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining us today. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure. Bye bye. Cool. So that was Dan Millwood from Gamefruit. And of course, you can check out and use that exceptional tool to get into games yourself to have a look at that. Uh, as for ourselves, we will be moving on to the Empower Tour. It was a collaboration of organizations joined up to bring a digital tech roadshow to schools of the West Coast. Uh, that was Digital Natives Academy, Victory Up, Nati Gaming, and Hado NZ, sponsored by Playtech New Zealand and Development West Coast. Uh, all combined forces to tour around the schools of the West Coast and let students learn more about digital technology and gaming. Uh, their first stop was Karamea, and let's have a look at how that turned out.
wish we had that at school. <laughs> we probably didn't have as much games calls at, uh, consoles at that time. When you think about it, uh, you know, games, because it has grown so big, there is a, a sort of abundance of consoles, whereas, like, back in my day, um, when I was, like, year 90, year 13, that was technically the PlayStation era. And not many people had PlayStations. PlayStations were like a rare thing. Uh, so we, because we have this kind of abundance, especially it's because it's all online now. Online has, you know, connected us a lot more. We can actually talk to other people. We can see other people, see what they're playing and doing. Um, I think we didn't really have that. And you're right. It's like unfortunate that we didn't have access to that. You look but, really sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Yeah. And it's cool because, you know, a lot of those schools are probably rural. So it's really yeah. cool to see them um, be involved. And like even our phones, we can play phone um, yeah. games on our phone today and connect yeah. with our phone. So The only reason I was playing Genshin Impact is I was getting my Welkin tokens. So those are, that gets me some Primo gems, which are a currency in the game. Um, and then Blaze pointed out, he was like, we should just play it on the stream. And I was like, you're done right. We should play it on the stream. And then <laughs> Kahu kind of had to hold down the fort while I was just trying to do some of my daily commissions. Uh, so that was uh, very kind of her to let me do so. Um, I see Hardcore Hypixel has said PS1 was also like $1,000. Was it $1,000? I remember. Uh, yeah. They were our neighbors had a, had a PS1 yeah. and they would play yeah. Crash Team Racing. And I remember oh, I went over there once yes. and knocked on the door and I was like, hi, um, uh, they're kids home? And the mum was like, no, sorry, they are. I was like, oh. Can I play on the PlayStation? <laughs> <laughs> she said no. <laughs> she said no. You heard it here, like, first, folks. Kahu got denied for playing the PlayStation. That is insane. Maybe that's why I was sad. Maybe yeah. it was, like, bringing up these sad True. memories of not being able to yeah. play the PlayStation. Yeah. Well, then, NZ has said, I played an NTSC PS1 back in 1996, original Tekken and Japanese only. Uh, for those who don't know, it was a different analog format uh, for our TVs back in the day, which meant Japan and America had NTSC formatted uh, PlayStation 1s, whereas the region we're in, uh, which is Asia Pacific, yes, I know Japan is technically part of it, but they had NTSC. Uh, we had PAL devices, um, and it technically meant we didn't actually get the best visual experience, um, but that was due to the type of TVs we had. I also see Wolfie says, I wish they had all this at Mana College. Uh, Kahu just said she wished she had it back in the day, as do uh, I. I wish it would have been a great... I I was engaged at school, but it definitely might have helped me with my, like, get into my pathway into gaming a bit quicker if I had that kind of, um, you know, surrounding and guidance, I think. Because um, especially back in that day, um, games wasn't really understood in, in that kind of uh, fashion, you know. Everyone just thought it was just a thing you wasted time on. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's a, like you um, said earlier with your Xbox 360, you got all these different social relationships out of it, your uh, creative experiences. There used to be cartridges, didn't they? Because I remember having yeah. to blow yeah. on it. Like, that if the game the wasn't Nintendo. working, you'd pull yeah. the <laughs> cartridge out and try mm. blow the dust off. Oh, my gosh. And then we <laughs> got to almost two decades later where they said that actually did nothing, and it was uh, basically a placebo. Um, if anything, it could actually <gasps> damage cartridges because it could blow the dust further onto the board. Um, so well, please, has been alive. Yeah, do not blow on your game's cartridge if you do own one of those. So we had CDs yeah. though, and yeah, we, didn't we have did to, switch didn't to have CD to format. Those ones. So. But it would wipe though. Would have to wipe it. You'd also, could be dangerous because you could scratch it. So yeah, there were we, there were all these rules we shouldn't have followed. But we have a little but, bit more time, um, and I just want to point out with the PlayStation a quick bit of trivia for you out there, kids. Um, if you guys didn't know, the PlayStation would not exist without Nintendo. And that's because Sony approached Nintendo and said, hey, we want to do games consoles. Can we do one? And Nintendo were like, yeah, let's collaborate. Let's let's make something. Uh, so Sony were renowned for being really good in the audio uh, technology world. That's why they were supplying their CD drives, even though the CD drives were made by Philips. About halfway through the project, Nintendo, for some reason, got scared. And they said, we don't want to make this console with you anymore. Um, and what happened there is PlayStation said, cool, we're going to go make one. And so they made the PlayStation. So N Nintendo made the PlayStation happen. And that's your trivia for the day. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, uh, would you yeah. please be able to just let us know what's mm. happening tonight? 
Uh, what is happening tonight for the adults and teachers? If you guys return at uh, 4 p.m., they will be doing the digital well-being session that is with our production staff, DJ Blaze, who has been hiding behind the window. Thank you so much for all your work, my friend. Um, as for ourselves, we are wrapping up. That it's our final block for the day, but please join us back here. We will be picking back up with character design. Um, and Kahu got frightened because she got told she may have to draw on stream, so that'll be really fun. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys join us back here tomorrow at twitch.tv slash get into games NZ at 10 a.m. I am still that guy, Zeno J, joined by I'm the exceptional Kahu. Kahu Tapsal. Kahu Bennett Tapsal, everyone. But Kahu as an automotive Kahu. car. And who is she? Uh, that's twitch.tv slash Kahu is where you can find her for that. And we have been get into games LTRO 2022. Kakite. <laughs>